what is a proposal, and what is its goal. A proposal is a verbal presentation of the direction your group project will take. It is a general direction, not a contract. A lot of students ask, I said I was going to do this, but it looks like we have to change our plans. Do I have to do what the proposal says? Well, no. You are not bound to the terms of your proposal. Your projects may and most likely will adapt. What is the goal of a proposal? The goal is to formally and clearly establish the learning goals of your group projects. The methods, including equipment and software, the interaction and graphics aims of your project, and the planned individual contributions of your group members. Furthermore, the goal of the uh, proposal is to contextualize your project within the related research work through a literature review. Now I'm going to show you a template. This is a proposal for a template, and not an offer. You don't have to use the exact template or what it looks like or the color schemes. All of that is up to you, but you're welcome to use without change. It'll save you time. You want to start with a good title. So you're going to put the title for your project. Um, and you also want to identify who the group members are. So placing photographs of all your group members with your names and emails is a good idea. On the second slide, you repeat the uh, project title and you can show an image that exemplifies the type of interactive and graphics goals of your projects. So this is just a, a banner image that you may get online or you may produce yourself. But it, again, it's meant to contextualize the project for your audience. This slide you will not include in your presentation and you will also delete all the orange text that I put on the slides. In this slide, I give you the outline of the proposal. You start with the motivation, which should take about a minute. Uh, goals and challenges should take about two minutes. Related work, about three minutes there. Methods and techniques, three minutes again. And then you talk about the workload distribution and that should take about a minute. The total time of your presentations should be 10 minutes. Now, the times are meant as an upper limit. You can present in less time, of course. And like I said, you will delete the orange text in the uh, template that I have here. So let's start with the motivation. Now, you don't have to answer all the questions here. They are meant more as a sample for you. And the, the sample questions are, why is this project interesting to you as a student? And why is it interesting to us, the audience? What do you want to learn by doing this project? Why does the world need the project? And how does the project make the world a better place? Now we have a number of applications and you can use your imagination here. You don't have to make the world extremely better, but even a little better, I think, would be really nice, particularly uh, during the current times, including the pandemic. You have a minute to motivate the problem. The questions here are meant as a sample, as I said and you don't have to answer all of them. And you can also come up with your own questions. The goals and challenges. You have two minutes to state the main goals and challenges. Focus on your learning objectives. Remember the course ILOs, that is the intended learning outcomes and include your personal and group learning goals. The ILOs of the course, just to remind you, are one, collaborate online to build original and stable projects that combine methods in advanced computer graphics and advanced socially distant human computer interaction. That is the goal for 2020, given the COVID-19 pandemic. Number two, communicate online the theory and practice of these methods at a technical and practical level. Three, provide online informed constructive criticism to the development of the projects from other teams. And four, demonstrate the projects to open audiences. And for the most part, we were, we're going to try to do that online. Now remember, uh, challenges are the perceived obstacles to achieving your goals. Quickly, quickly state any challenges that you foresee and how you will address them, how you would um, pass those obstacles. Think carefully about this during 2020, given COVID-19. Now, here you're going to state the goals and you're going to state the challenges. It is up to you exactly how you prioritize and, and how you show this information. 
you have three minutes to present related work. You will only have time to show the three most relevant projects at this stage. You will have to do research, read, copy and paste images and videos if you find them, and present your material quickly and clearly. I created a YouTube video on how to do research for academic papers in Google Scholar. The video is following this link. And here, of course, um, you show an outline of the related work you're going to talk about. So you show the um, related work one, two, and three, the author and the year in this outline slide. But then in the next slide, you show um, the actual content of the related work. Um, so you may have an image or a video that demonstrates how the work is similar. You want to say what the related work project was about and how it is related to your proposed project. Clearly state what about your project is different from the, the work that you're referencing here. And also clearly state why these differences matter. This is very important work for you. It, it is part of your learning experience. Only show a video or figure and try to keep text to a minimum on this slide. Now, of course, this year I'm going to have you do a recording of your presentation, which means that you will reshoot until you get it right. But it's a good idea to memorize everything you will say and only say that so that you can do as few takes as possible. Remember, you have 60 seconds to show and talk about the related work, um, each related work. So you have one, two, and three, 60 seconds each. You may show videos, and those videos you may actually splice them into your presentation, but we also want the slides. So I want to have a link to those videos, and uh, hopefully I'll, you, you will be able to embed the videos into the presentation here so that with a single click we can go and check out the original video and the original material that you researched. So here I'm simply restating the type of things you can talk about for the second related work and for the third related work. Now let's talk about methods and techniques. This is probably the most important slide or set of slides. You can have more than one. And um, it's one of the most important parts of your presentation. Put most of your effort making sure you have researched and tested the feasibility of this proposal as much as possible. That's where your time should be spent. So if you need to talk to people, talk to um, the studio director, the studio engineer, talk to me, talk to the teaching assistant, all these activities you need to be doing as well as reading, researching and watching online videos on how to do things and how accessible the different um, libraries are, APIs, software, hardware. So there's a lot of research that goes into this, making sure your project is as feasible as possible. Again, you only have three minutes to talk about this. So it's a good idea to memorize everything you are going to say and say only that. Since you will be recording this presentation again, you will have many opportunities to do retakes, but the more you memorize, the, le the fewer retakes you will have to do, saving you time. Now, the type of uh, questions that you will answer here is, what are the methods you will use in your project? And that, of course, includes uh, even development and communication methods. So for example, Slack, Trello, GitHub, are some of the methods that you may use. And other methods that you may use are Blender uh, for modeling and Unity for bringing everything together. What devices will you use? What libraries will you import? How will you connect the parts? Will you develop anything new that can be contributed back to the world as code or design patterns, for example? What interaction paradigms will you use? Will you design new interactions or new algorithms? You should talk about these methods and techniques on separate slides using as many visual and video aids as possible, keeping a close eye on your time. Of course, you don't want to go over your time. Individual contribution. Uh, this is really important. Um, and it is the only way to achieve a B and an A. So an individual contribution need not be in the critical path of the entire project. So I'm going to try to explain what that means. There is the basic project that should work for everybody and everybody should contribute to it as a group. So you may have individual contributions to that core project. Keep the project as simple as possible so that it, that it works uh, on the full vertical um, pipeline. So from, from the modeling or simulation all the way down to the rendering and interaction, everything is working. Then you can define advanced topics or topics that are more complex. Let's, let's put it more simply which may or may not work, right? And if it doesn't work, you still should 
talk about your learning objectives, how you achieved your learning objectives. Even if you don't join the branch, even if you don't merge the branch into the core project, you should still present your learning objectives achieved. So that is critical. In other words, you can achieve an A by working on an individual contribution that is part of a branch that was complex. And in the end of the project, you didn't have enough resources or something didn't work, you were not able to merge it, but you still show your work. So that is how you get your grade. If it works and you are able to merge it to the main core, then of course that's better for everybody. In the past, individual contributions have been clearest when presented as a table, and I will show that table in the next couple of slides. Some of the contributions will be to the group project core, some will be to the individual branch. Everybody should be contributing to the core. Everybody who wants to get a B should be contributing to one of advanced graphics or advanced interaction. Everybody who's um, aiming to get an A should be working towards both. So a full contribution towards advanced graphics and a full contribution towards advanced interaction. Now the core, you wanna make sure the core of the project works. That is all the simple features and interaction work. Uh, it is your backup plan. Everyone should contribute to some aspect of the core. All rows and columns should up, add up to 100%. The branches, again, like I said, to get a B, you should individually contribute to a branch that is considered advanced graphics or advanced interaction. Most of the, of the work should be your own. You can still collaborate, but it should be kept to a minimum. To get an A, you should contribute to both an advanced graphics and an advanced interaction branches. The branches may or may not work. If they do not work, exclude them from the final cut, but you should still talk about them. So in the deliverable, which is a website, you will include a, a page per each avenue researched, whether it worked or not. All columns should add up to 100% and the rows to 100% for a B and 200% for an A. And here I'm talking about these rows and columns. In the rows, you can see you have the names of the students and in the columns, you have the tasks. And these are the tasks for the individual contributions to the core. As you can see, both rows and columns add up to 100%. But when we're talking about the branches, what we're gonna have is, again, the rows of the table will be the students and the branches, um, the columns of the table will be the different branches that the students take upon themselves to do. Here, student number one has contributed 100% to branch one and seven and um, getting 200%, that means an A. And students two and three, they've contributed um, to two branches. For the most part, student two contributed to branch number two and three to branch number three. Again, earning a B. That's an example here. You want a thank you slide at the end where you repeat your um, student names and emails. You should include my name and email just for questions. And at some point, you will eventually need to create a website for your project and give yourselves a permanent URL, a permanent web address. So the sooner you do it, the better, and you can start putting information there for people to go and find out more about your project. So that would be that information here. Now, it is important to record the videos of your presentations. I want this year's presentations to be very fluid and as engaging as possible. Make them clean, well-rehearsed, engaging, and uh, clean, well edited and um, at most 10 minutes long. Post your videos in Vimeo or YouTube and in Canvas, you will send the link to your slides and to your video. It is important to name the files like this, AGI underscore pro uh, proposal underscore group number number underscore project name underscore video and underscore slides. In the group number, you replace the number number with your, or hashtag hashtag with your group number. And of course, you place your group project name instead of project name. Talk about the grading criteria. Again, you're now going to put this slide in your presentation, but uh, be sure to practice your proposal many times before you record the video so that the recording actually happens quickly. Have a technically clear proposal, include related work that is state of the art. Typically, that means past 2010 in terms of research and graphics and interaction. Um, you can use the video that I showed you to look for papers in Google Scholar, or you could also browse conferences like SIGGRAPH, SIGKAI, Eurographics, and other similar places for inspiration. You need to state in um, clear individual contributions to the project. Remember, 
this need not be part of the critical path of the project when you're talking about the branch contributions. So this is how the grade uh, breaks down. So it's four points towards the final 100 points. And in the video, you're going to include one point for being clear, well rehearsed, and all the parts of the proposal are present. You're going to get a point for a presentation that is technically and socially feasible. Now, the socially feasible, I include this here because of what we're talking about, socially distant human-computer interaction, how you define it and how you maintain it. The related work is state-of-the-art in graphics and interaction, and it is very, very clearly presented. You get a point for that. And one final point for clear individual contributions. So this is how you get the four points for the video for the proposal. Of course, you need to submit the video and the slides. Thank you.